Coming up on show 552, plugging your Xbox controller into your car, Daimler building the first two electric trucks, and the world's largest EV ferry. Plus, we are talking Tesla Model 3 doing very well in California. No surprises there. Price changes, though, with the 3 and the Y. A new EV called the Draco. And we're talking a ID buggy from VW. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. My name is Martin Lee. Here's what you missed in the last 24 hours on Friday, 16th of August, 2019. Thank you, as always, to myev.com for helping make this show. It is indeed the the world's first marketplace, all about buying and selling and learning about EVs along the way. There's a new section on there, YEV, if you really are totally new to the podcast, to the concept of electric vehicles, to the idea of... Why should I even do it? Go check out the new look version 2 of myev.com. Aaron Greenberg is the GM of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft, and he tweeted a few hours ago, and it said this, plugged my new Xbox One controller into my Tesla Model 3 USB port, and boom, I'm gaming in my car. Played all the games and working great for something not formally supported, thanks at Elon Musk. So I didn't know that that was even a thing you could even try and do. So maybe Tesla are just waiting to formally announce that. I know that there's been chatter online on Twitter, I've seen that, about plugging in games controllers to the Tesla Model 3, but this is the GM of Xbox Games Marketing giving it a go and saying actually plugging in games controllers works a dream. Well, staying with the Model 3, it did very well in the first half of the year in California. Well, no surprises there. 74,000 plug-in EVs were sold in the state of California in the first half of this year at a market share of 7.8%, says Inside EVs. Well, the new car sales report has been issued by the California New Car Dealers Association, and it reveals the overall California market declined during the first six months of the year. It went down by 5.6% year over year. In such an environment, electrified car sales could be forgiven for struggling, But it's the opposite. In fact, they didn't. A market share of 13% for electrified vehicles. Pure electrics, what we call BEVs, battery electric vehicles, BEV, BEVs. Uh, That's growing quickly, and it's driven by one company, and that would be the domestically made and homegrown, actually, just down the road, Tesla, which is the quickest growing brand. 40,085 sales in the first half of the year. 4.2% of all car sales in California are a Tesla. But how about this for overall performance? The Model 3 is the third best-selling car. Uh, Hang on a minute. I didn't say anything about electric cars in that statement. No, I didn't need to. It wasn't so long ago the top four selling cars were the Honda Civic, the Toyota Camry, the Honda Accord, and the Toyota Corolla. And although the Model 3 always did well, there were so many people saying, look, the Model 3 is always going to be hampered by being an electric vehicle. You're never going to topple that holy grail of the Civic, the Camry, the Accord, or put the Corolla in there as well. Well, it's done too, and it's not far off being the number one car, because it's so far sold more than the Corolla and more than the Honda Accord in the first half of the year, so it's already displaced those. So the electric Tesla Model 3 is now third in the overall sales table. It just blows my mind, because cars like the Accord and the Corolla are so wildly popular. And how far was it behind the Camry? A few hundred sales. So it's conceivable that very soon the Model 3 will be the second best-selling car in California. And in fact, at 33,000 sales in the first half of the year, and the number one car being the Civic, and that's at 39,000, you can see a clear path to the Model 3 being the number one car. Not just electric, electrified, the number one car. Man, that's crazy. I love stories like this. It's so cool when electric cars dominate whenever we do these stories around the world. Let's talk Tesla Semi, or Semi, and the range estimates are looking good. The Semi sighting has been done this time, and it proved to be a little more special. CHP Donner Pass officers were able to speak to the truck's driver. The Tesla was doing a 
bit of heavy hauling to test out the new semi-truck and the driver of the Tesla was gracious enough to give some time to the officers and a bit of detail about the truck according to the driver the all electric model that's doing the rounds at the moment is operating at £75,000 for trailer and cargo so that's £75,000 total impressive though is that the vehicle is now meeting and exceeding the previous range estimates despite carrying that very heavy load, says Tesla Rati. Well, Tesla has continued to make improvements to the semi since unveiling. Originally, it was going to have 500. Then Elon said on Twitter it's going to have 600 miles. And now it looks like, though, with increased testing, with increases in technology, it's going even further and carrying heavier weights. Brilliant. Love it. Right, let's talk more trucks and Daimler. Daimler Trucks of North America announced that the first two all-electric Class 8 trucks, the Freightliner E Cascadia, have now been built for the customers. The pilot program was delayed compared to the initial plan of getting the vehicles out last year, but they're on target now, and we're going to see some progress. The trucks are heading to Southern California, and they're going to be tested by the Penske Truck Leasing and NFI, says Inside EVs. A statement I got hold of today from Daimler says this, and I quote, the e cascadias are destined for the southern california operations of both companies and will arrive later this month additional deliveries of the freightliner electric innovation fleet will continue throughout 2019 good luck to everyone at daimler working on that the cascadia the e cascadia i should say is the the electric version of the best selling heavy duty truck out there the best selling truck out there is the freightliner the all electric version of that is going to have a 550 kilowatt hour battery that's good for 250 miles or 400 odd kilometers on a charge this is a truck very much designed for local and regional distribution and i'll put a link to the show notes if you want to read more about that let's talk about some price changes that happened today Yes, it wouldn't be a normal day if Tesla didn't change the prices of something. They've updated the Model Y prices, and the Model Y prices have now been changed to match the recent changes with the Model 3. Are we keeping up just about? The Model 3 performance has been increased by $1,000. A month after uh, a month after significantly decreasing the price of the highest model, says Electrek. Back in July, if you remember, back in July, Tesla updated the entire pricing of their range, and one of the biggest changes was decreasing the price of the top end Model Three, the Performance. That was offered for just fifty four nine ninety. Today, Tesla's updated the price to increase it by a thousand dollars. It's now. 55,990. Tesla also updated some model th- some model Y pricing and this is where it gets a little more interesting, a little bit more confusing and it's in order for the model Y to follow the recent three price changes, of course, the Y is a bigger vehicle, it's more expensive. The prices are now more closer to model 3 prices, about 4 or 5,000 dollar difference. In the comments section, though, is when you really get to dig into the nitty-gritty of what Tesla have done today. Uh, One of the commenters called Aldrich says the base price of the respective Model Y trim has actually remained the same. All options have been updated to match the rest of the lineup. This includes the previous $3,000 autopilot option, which now becomes standard. So there were some other, not electric, but there were some other articles flying around online today that says uh, the Model Y just got more expensive. And from what I can gather, yes, the headline price on the Model Y did go up, but they've also bundled in what was previously a $3,000 autopilot optional extra So therefore, the net result at the end of the day, because everyone was going to spec autopilot, surely, surely you wouldn't buy the Model Y without it. So if you were going to spec autopilot, actually the net result is the price has gone down. And also the difficult thing is with the Model Y is that these aren't reservations in the way that the Model 3 was with the deposit going down to express your interest. These are pre-orders these are people putting it these you may if you've put your money down for the model y you've chosen your color your interior one of the users online steve heller says i chatted online with tesla today then i called customer service to verify that my order a long range model y in white is actually going down by two thousand dollars and that's because it now includes autopilot 
the user called Think This said, I tried to modify my order online, and when you click the button to modify, nothing happens. User Kelvin Mace says, same thing for me. The white interior option is now gone. So clearly, some price changes, some alterations... And it hasn't gone entirely smoothly for everyone. Maybe that was just some teething problems. Give it a few hours. Maybe the online configurator for Model Y has been fully updated. I don't know. I'm in the UK. I've not fully played with the US side of the Tesla website. If you've got some insight on any of these stories that I do, but particularly on Tesla, because I can lose track sometimes. And if you're a real Tesla expert on this, let me know your take on it. You can email me hello at evnewsdaily.com. There's a brand new electric hypercar in the mix, and this one looks seriously promising. It's built by a California-based company called Draco, D-R-A-K-O, Draco, and they've got a simple name for it. Their car is called the GTE. That's it. And it, the car has made its public debut today. It's been shown off at Pebble Beach, and according to a press release from Draco, the GTE is anything but simple. Says Christopher Smith for Motor1.com, such fantastic specs from the unknown automaker aren't really uncommon but before you chalk this up to another vaporware ev supercar watch the video that's in the article that i'll link through in the show notes the car is very real and it's very quick the gte has four electric motors one on each wheel combined horsepower of 1200 draco says the torque vectoring algorithms have been developed by lapping the nurburgring and they can adjust the torque at each individual wheel 1000 times a second That kind of blows my mind a bit. I don't know whether that is good for algorithms and talk vectoring. I don't know. Is a thousand times a second good or is that normal for the car industry? It sounds impressive. Uh, The battery, 90 kilowatt hours. Fast charging, 150 kilowatt speeds. So they're not crazy specs. Normally with vaporware, they sort of put in, you know, like it's going to fly and serve you a G&T and stuff like that. And actually, those are reasonable specs for a supercar. So we'll see where that one goes. Could well be vaporware yet, but the video online of the car in action looks good to me. Let's talk about EV Ferries, the world's largest all-electric ferry called the Ellen. Made its first commercial trip today. And it's connecting the ports in Denmark of, I think, Sobi and Finchav. I probably got those massively wrong. The islands of Aero and Als. It's in southern Denmark. So any of my Danish listeners, if you can please help me out with my pronunciation, if I've just butchered some of those names, please correct me. Capable of carrying 30 vehicles and 200 passengers, the e-ferry called Ellen is a single-ended, Roll-on, roll-off passenger ferry with a continuous main deck for trailers and cars, fully operational within a few weeks. They said, the CEO said this, and I quote, We are very proud to provide specifically designed unique lithium-ion batteries for the ferry, the precursor to a new era of the EV commercial marine sector, 4.3 megawatt hour capacity. The ferry represents a new milestone in commercial marine propulsion. Over one year, this one ferry on its own is going to prevent the release of 2,000 tonnes of CO2, 42 tonnes of NOx, 2.5 tonnes of particulates and 1.5 tonnes of SO2 into the atmosphere. This project demonstrates that today we can replace fossil fuel thermal drives with clean energy, and thus contribute to the fight against global warming and pollution for the well-being of our communities, end quote. And that is Anil Srivastava, who is the CEO. Finally, let's talk VW and Volkswagen's concept all-electric June buggy. Very much concept phase, this is. This is not a kind of, we're going to put it on sale next year. This is very much a, this is what you could do with our platform if you wanted. Uh, The ID Buggy. It's a beach buggy. It's the classic beach buggy updated for 2019. And for the first time, rather than just being shown off either in pictures or very carefully or with a rope around it or with lots of minders or with cars following it around going, nobody touch it. This time it has actually been shown off doing what a beach buggy should do, driving on the beach. And of course, It has to be the beach of California. Uh, The MEB-based beach buggy will very soon be shown at the Pebble Beach uh, Concourse d'Elegance during Monterey Car Weeks as Inside EVs. 62 kilowatt hour battery for the beach buggy. 155 miles of range if they were measuring it on WLTP. 150 kilowatt rear wheel drive motor. Loads of fun. Total silence. 
those numbers look weird to me. 62 kilowatt hour battery on a beach buggy with no doors, no roof, probably a lightweight body, and 155 miles on WLTP? That's surely a mistake. A 62 kilowatt hour battery in a very lightweight beach buggy. 155 miles. Those two numbers don't make sense to me. Hey, what do I know? Hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Now, there's a couple of things happening. This weekend, I'm in the county of Dorset, and Dorset EVs uh, now has its own local community Facebook group and having its first meetup this weekend on Sunday. If you would like to join, you haven't got to live in Dorset to be part of Dorset EVs. Maybe you live in, I don't know, the bordering counties of Hampshire or something, or Somerset. If you would like to... Join Dorset EVs on Facebook. You can. I'm uh, I, I, the an, an admin, one of two. I think it's myself and Ryan are the admins of that. And I'm I'm utterly rubbish at going on there and approving people. So you know, I'm I'm, I'm trying to be better. Having the first meet up on Sunday, and it's the one of many many events that happen around the country with 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 local community groups getting together. I can't make it this weekend. I have a good excuse. I've been booked on a course for a very long time. I say course, I'm learning to sail. I've done some sailing courses already, and I'm doing another one now. It's probably the most middle-class sentence anyone will utter today. I'm, I can't make my electric car festival because I'm doing a sailing course. But that's why, that's why I'm not at my own local event, because I'm, I'll be on the water in Pool Harbour uh, sailing a, a little sailboat. I'm not bad. I'm not bad on the water, but I need to up my skills a little bit. So I'm learning some new stuff this weekend. Next weekend, it's EVs in the park, and that is conveniently for me nowhere near where I am. That is in Coventry, and it is actually a very convenient location for most people. I'm just stuck down on the south coast. And it's a social event for owners of 100% electric vehicles or EVs with range extenders. And if you do have one, you're able to drive your EV into the park. The council give them permission once a year to do that. Has to be a full EV. I'm sure there's probably some reasons for that in terms of safety and not having big fuel tanks and stuff in the middle of a park. However, it's a family event. Bring the kids, bring your picnic. Weather's looking amazing. And all you have to do is just register to say, hey, I'm coming. It's a free event. And if you want to turn up with your EV, just pop online, go to EVITP. It's EVs in the park, EVITP and uh, .co.uk. And just fill out the little form and say, yep, I'm coming. Bring in my car. And then we know you're on your way. EV News Daily is delighted to be a sponsor of that event. It's going to be recording a bunch of stuff with not just me, but other people at the event as well, which I'll bring you on the podcast on a future Saturday special. Let's talk about question of the week this week. How can car makers advertise EVs? And how should car makers be advertising EVs? Let me know. Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, go to Facebook and YouTube, and leave a comment on there. Well, there are 235 patrons of the show. Patreon is a website where individuals can support creators. Thank you very much to those that do. Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby and Avid Technology are the premium partners of this show. Looking forward to bringing you an update from tryev.com as well. Former guests and partners of this show. Uh, Some exciting news coming from them. Just waiting for some more details. The previous shows are all online, 551 of those. The new shows come at you daily and you can get them first and free and automatically by subscribing for free to this podcast on your platform of choice drop by my socials facebook linkedin and twitter have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid